All right, brother, got all three of your amps done. I'm just going to roll through them real quick. I know the Texas Star said there wasn't nothing wrong with it. Um, it it's a low output amp, man. I don't know if it's the 2290 or what it is, but, you know, it still make a good driver. I did have to retune the input of it and change the wraps on the input transformer. It helped a little bit, but uh, it's still got a little bit of reflect on the input but uh, it's a lot better than it was um, but what I did have to do man is I had to replace this plastic piece this plastic piece see man they're broke they were shattered I put you uh well they were cracked I put you a new uh, lens on right here, new lens right here. Power button is a little sticky, by the way. And, uh, 150 watt slug. Hey, so it does about 80 watts. That's about all I can get out of it. I think the 2290 may be a little weak. But you don't see that much, but. And it's possible. I've seen it. All right. So I know you said there wasn't nothing wrong with that. You just looks like you said send it just in case I need parts from it or something for the other amp, which I uh, did not need any parts. All right. So that's the text star. And by the way, man, I want you to pay attention that uh, I know these are pre bono. If anybody else is watching, that's between me and uh, my buddy right here, basically, uh, just to make it uh, a real, real quick explanation. Uh, it ended up taking a lot longer to get his build done. I wanted to do something for him to make it up to him. I told him to send me some repairs if he has any, and I'll do them for free. And I want to show you, man, I'm not doing these repairs the way that maybe some people possibly would do them i'm not getting paid i'm gonna do just bare minimum to get it repaired no i'm still acting the same way that i normally would with any repair and as you'll see i did not only repair the amps i also modified them in areas to make them a little more stable work a little better give me a second let me put this one up this is the palomar 250 all right sorry okay, i guess i could have pressed pause all right got the all right sorry i'm sitting there looking at my leg <laughs> anyway you said you had output reflect and the reason why, you know, the capacitor, I just did one of these repairs actually last week to this same amp, same issue. The output capacitor they choose to use for this amp is so freaking tiny, man. I cannot believe that they use it. I mean, it's a ceramic disc. It's so tiny. It's tiny as a pimple. It blows my mind. And it was a 27 Pico fair, and, and I retuned it for you on the output. That's what this caster is right here. And it tuned out almost identical to the one I did uh, uh, last week. It had 1446s in it. And uh, this one tuned out to about 57 pico paired. I went ahead and added you some feedback circuits right here. That'll help kind of make the amp a little bit more stable. And also added some 120s right here. Loads from the collector to ground for you. Okay, the output came up a little bit after doing this, and the reflect came down on the output. All right, just using a four watt bench radio as normal. Oh, 250 watt slug. Oh. 250 watts.
about a 45 watt dead key. Oh, what's this thing talking to old oh, gatekeeper letting the mop flop? Oh, gatekeeper, let's take a look at the input reflect. Look at that thing, man. Low, 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 low. Just the way I like it. No doubt about it. Old gatekeeper getting down, getting down. <laughs> All right, man. So that's your Palomar 250. All set up and ready to rock and roll. All right, I'll press pause this time. Let me press pause and hook up the third one. Alright, this is the amp that I had to do most of the work on. Uh, to be honest with you, if this was a normal repair, the uh, bill would probably be around 80 bucks. I know, uh, for the labor, I, I know that sounds crazy, but dude, this has to be one of the most confusing, sophisticated... Ooh, somebody's calling me, but it's still recording. I have never had that happen before, ever. I like that. I wish it was... Actually, that's the first time ever that someone was calling. And... My amp's still recording. My, my video's still recording. Sweet. Well, anyway, um, it's because I got my Wi-Fi off. Decide to keep me off as soon as the call uh, start stopped ringing. <laughs> anyway, man, this has to be one of the most sophisticated amplifiers with all of this stuff going on. I pulled up the schematic, man, and uh, I'll be honest with you, there there seems to be errors. <laughs> Zoom in. There seems to be errors in this schematic, but I mean, look here. We're dealing with one, two, three, four, five conventional transistors. Five conventional transistors. One, two, three, four. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Well, this is the fifth, but one, two, three, four conventional transistors. And if you try to follow this, I mean, it is one of the most confusing circuits I've ever tried to follow of what's actually going on. I mean, I know what's going on, don't get me wrong, but good God, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. From doing all that, the diode over here on the back end was blown. And it seems with that happened, it threw off, it, it blew. God dang it, I can't remember if it was this, it was this transistor right here. Yeah, I can tell because that one's standing up more than the others. I had to solder that back in. Um, and it threw this, and it blew this transistor, I guess, in the process of that happening. All of this, these transistors are a chain reaction that's connected to the bias. Okay, and somehow it's connected to the power over the preamp. It's very confusing to follow, but this is a regulated bias amplifier. Okay, it's regulated biased. It's a pretty simplex bias circuit. Uh, I'll tell you these transistors right here, which is I think a 10 amp transistor, it gets hot. It does get hot, but it appears to be fine. I remember and I had one of these amps personally. I put a little heat sink on back there, and the heat sink just got as hot as that did. <laughs> but um, but that was not the only issue. After I got that and actually got the thing, see, I couldn't read what you had put on the top, man. It's, it almost seemed like you said would not do wattage until unkeyed, which I didn't. Know. I was thinking maybe you keyed and it wasn't doing nothing. And when you unkeyed, it started oscillating. That's what I was. Because I've had amps do that before. You key, it, try to talk, it's not doing nothing. As soon as you let go of the key, it, it goes into full oscillation and the amp stays keyed up. But I think every time I've ever had that happen, it was doing power the whole time. It just wouldn't unkey. <clears throat> but I didn't see that happening with it, so I don't know what that was about. But I had to rework this whole circuit pretty much, man. I had to change the wraps and the output transformer, change the capacitor on the top right here. I had to retune the input and the out. The input don't it didn't even have no capacitance. It had no capacitive load on it. I had to take the 1200 peak of air cap off that was right here and put a 330 because the input reflect was over a watt and a half. 
So this is what was on the output, a 910, and it had this 1200 right here on the input. And it just was not the right value, man. I mean, the input reflect was over a watt and a half. And uh, so I retuned the whole amp, changed, the, changed that. I thickened up on some of the solder, too, as you see right here. I think because I mean you're sitting here with, with with this 10 gauge coming in I, I like the ferrite beads that's good that those are 43 cord are giving some good inductance on the power um, the uh, RF but uh, you know it goes into a paper thin thing feeding the transformer you know I don't agree with that at all so I went ahead and thickened that up to help with the current uh, flow with that and also I went ahead and thickened up the path the RF travels right here going back to the relay I like to do that with all these things I uh, went ahead and added you two feedback circuits and I had to replace both of these 330s too because I went I moved the 330 just a little bit to kind of straighten it up with my little OCD and it, the leg broke off that easy so I went ahead and just unsoldered it matched uh, two 330s and put you a set of 330s on there the amp, actually, when, when I got it actually working before I changed the circuit, it was only doing like freaking 150 watts or less. And I, that's when I could tell it's, it, it just ain't right. I, I first tried to tune it. And that's what I first tried to do. And I, I only could get about 50 more watts out of it when I tuned it. That's when I knew I, I went ahead and dropped the wrap right here. It was three wraps on the output. Okay, so now it's three and two, which is the conventional wrap pattern that we use with 22879s. So it brought this thing to life, man. The bias uh, was, oh, last thing. The bias was set a little too high, man. I always check your bias with these amplifiers. It was set at dot seven three volts, which is uh, too high. So I, I turned that down to dot six eight with the 2k pot right here that's what that's right there is adjust your bias you got a lot of adjustment on it but you got enough all right well here you go man just four watts uh driving the thing now it was only doing 150 when i started off okay we got the 500 watt slug all right we're reading the middle scale where he says 50 that's 500 watts go there's your 350 watts this amp is supposed to do. Palomar Red Devil 350 high drive. Just driving 4 watts RMS, which is about 1820 peak. It gives us our 350. Oh, a little over 350. Show you the dead key. Good low dead key, man. Like 25 watts. RMS, go, oh, 100 bird dead nuts on. By the way, the voltage on all these, uh, on all these amps I'm running on is 15 right now. Alright, I'm going to hook the hot radio up now because, I mean, this thing is high drive. But I, me personally, if it was my amplifier, I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive it no harder than what I was just doing, let it last you. Don't get me wrong, man, this is a good amp. I mean, it's biased, it's regulated biased, it's a good amp. I've uh, fixed these before and sold them, and they sell for over $300, I'm serious. Um, take this fuse out right here, it'll probably help with the power distribution, thicken up on the power wire to 8 gauge. Um... That would help possibly even maybe soldering a wire from here to the back of the transformer a little thicker. Um, that could be a little something that would help too. I thickened up on the ground solder right here too on the ground pad. Alright, so we got the hot radio hooked up now. So we're driving 8 watts RMS. 8 watts RMS. 500 watt slug still. Let's see how much more that gives us on the RMS. Middle scale. Oh, 150 watts RMS. That looks good, especially for this amplifier. PEP. Let's see if we get any more peak out of it. Oh, 
Oh yeah, man, this thing's now doing 400 watts. No doubt about it. Oh, red, red devil, red devil, three, four, three, fifty. Oh, red devil, oh gatekeeper, letting the mop flop. Oh, gatekeeper, letting this old cow pick a mop flop, and I'm good and gone now. Bye bye. <laughs> She's working, brother. It's a nice little ant, man. I like it. All right, man. Thanks for being patient with me, brother. And I'm glad I was able to do something for you. The amount of hours I worked on these are... What time is it? 3, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, 3. I fixed all three amplifiers in 6 to 7 hours. I started on this morning. It's pretty much almost a full day's work. I really should have been doing some packaging and stuff, but I wanted to get these done for you so we can get them shipped back to you today. All right, man, I'm gone. See ya.